History Network, host of the African History Network show. I'm a talk show host, researcher, lecturer, writer, and a historian. So it is Friday, November 27th, 2020. November is almost gone. We have uh, survived uh, almost another year. And it's Black Friday as well, Black Friday weekend, I should say. And we are here with Kenya K. Stevens of the Progressive Love Academy to find out more about intimacy and G-spot orgasms, female ejaculation, and the, the diva deep dive. So how are you doing today, Kenya? I'm very well. I'm so happy we get to cover this topic today. Everybody's home. They're resting. They're having time with their partner. It's time to talk about this. Absolutely. Well, you know, I, I, I saw your post this morning. I said, I don't know what all this is about, but I need to talk to Kenya about it. I know I need to talk to Kenya about this. So, because <laughs> it's, it's very interesting. How's everybody doing? So let me just say from the beginning, everybody, okay, this is for adults only. Okay. Now, we, we, you know, we, we don't plan to just be graphic, graphic, but this is, this is an adult conversation. Okay. So I want everybody to know that from the beginning. All right. So, um, can you tell people, first of all, Kenya K. Stevens is the uh, CEO of the Progressive Love Academy. You've seen um, interviews I've done with her in the past, going back of probably about the past 10 years when I was on blog talk radio. Um, can you let people know, uh, first of all, exactly what is the Diva Deep Dive? And then we want to talk about um, the G-spot orgasms and the clitoral orgasms, things like this. Yes. The Diva Deep Dive is a course that I did for women when I had lots of clients coming to me saying that either they've never had a climax or an orgasm or that they have a hard time reaching an orgasm. Even my daughter told me, who's 20 now, she told me when she was 16, 17, she was having a hard time with orgasm. Now, you know, 83% of women in the United States have never had an orgasm with their partner. They can do it by themselves utilizing toys, which I don't subscribe to, but utilizing toys and such, but they cannot have an orgasm during intercourse. And so I thought that this was rather serious. You know, if this was men and they couldn't have no orgasm, this would be a fire alarm, a red, you know, <laughs> an emergency. So right. for me, it was an emergency. And so I did the Diva Deep Dive course, six videos and uh, demonstrations of me showing women how to open to not just the clitoral orgasm, but to the other ones that you mentioned. Okay, so you posted a testimonial today. And uh, once again, I want everybody to go to uh, bit.ly uh, forward slash dive, uh, was it Diva Deep Dive, Diva yes. Deep Dive, or bit. Uh, dot ly forward slash diva deep dot diva deep dive and we're going to post a link here so you um I, i've known a number of, i've known women in the past african-american women in the past who have um suffered from different types of sexual trauma okay and that sexual trauma that they suffered from then negatively impacted their sex life intimacy with uh, their significant other, intimacy with their partner, et cetera. And one of the things that you um, posted today is I did not trust any male to bring me to orgasm until I was in my early 30s. It's not, it's not that I didn't trust them, it's that I did not know how they might accomplish it without my help. Is this, is this uh, a lack of trust? or a lack of real sex education. Talk about that for a minute, because for some women who have um, been experienced sexual trauma or something like that, it could be lack of trust, or there can be some blockage there as well. Absolutely. I, you know, we have this one central line of chi that flows through our body to energize whatever we're focused on. If we're focused on orgasm, but our sexual chi is locked into what I call buckets of the past, where you try to become orgasmic, but that chi flows into one of your fear buckets. It flows mm. into one of your uh, mom or dad told you that you were wrong about sex. If your chi is going into something else beside your place, pleasure right now in this moment, then you're going to have a concern with your sexuality, with getting moist, 
and with orgasm. You know, um, one of those things, that testimony was mine. <laughs> I did not trust men to bring me to orgasm. And I realized that my sexual chi was flowing elsewhere into other traumas. And so I had to break those traumas away from my chi and let my chi flow directly to pleasure. And that is what the Diva Deep Dive course does for women. It's so urgent. Okay, so when you talk about, uh, well, I mean, first of all, you, you said a mouthful right there. When, when you talk about uh, sexual chi, sexual chi, let, let people know what, what is that? What do, you, what do you mean when you say that? When I say chi, I mean life force. So the chi mm -hmm. is not sexual, but it, it, it can feed anything that you're doing. If you're doing a lot of thinking, your chi is feeding your mind. If right. you're doing a lot of running, your chi is feeding your muscles. And if you're making love, your chi is supposed to be feeding, you know, your uterus and engorging your vagina and bringing your mind and body and heart into homeostasis orgasm. Mm -hmm. But that is a hard deal if you're, if you have around your sexuality, all of these fears and old traumas and things wow. that have not been cleared up, which the African-American woman, come on, <laughs> well, come on. Well, you know, uh, when I did uh, I covered the whole um R Kelly scandal and things like that a lot on my show not the not to sensational sensationalize it but deal with the facts but also deal with trauma and in doing research on on uh that topic I came across uh studies uh one study said that by age 18 60 percent of African-American women have experienced some type of sexual trauma, whether it's incest, molestation, or rape. Another one said 40%, but 40% is too high. We're, we're talking, we're, we're talking about by age 18, we're talking about between 40% to 60% of African-American women experiencing some type of sexual trauma by age 18. And yes. this will negative, most likely negatively impact relationships, intimacy, uh, and, and them, maybe them oftentimes even being able to orgasm on their own. Um, so explain to people, you talk about the clitoral orgasm versus the G spot climax or G spot orgasm. Explain the difference between the two. And, and this will help a lot of men. Let me just say this because a lot of people <laughs> don't know the female body. Yeah. You, you, you know more about that, you know, because you have clients, but a lot of men don't know what a clitoris is or, or what have you. So talk about that for a minute, please. Absolutely. And a lot of men took the Diva Deep Dive course and it changed their life. They would tell you that. Um, but the clitoris, you know, the clitoral orgasm is the easiest one for a woman to obtain because the tip of the clitoris is outside the body. You understand? And you can right. touch it, feel it, lick it, you know, <laughs> see it. But the rest of the clitoris is inside of the body, and it's a very large organ inside of the body. But stimulating the tip of that clitoris is great. The African women call that the little girl's orgasm, as referenced by Shatan Nityamo, who is a famous Black um, tantrika. But the little girl's orgasm is where we begin. So uh, in the Diva Deep Dive, you'll journey all the way up. The, um, the G-spot orgasm is internal. So the G-spot is like the male prostate. Mm -hmm. The females have a prostate as well. It's internal. And so that can literally be touched and felt inside of the walls of the vagina. So once that happens, that's where the female ejaculate comes from. The female ejaculation that you've seen recently highlighted and lots of things, you know, pornography mm -hmm. being one of those. But really, if a woman has this function and we don't know that we have this function, I was feeling cheated when I was 33 years old and realized my body could do something that I didn't know it could do, which right. is ejaculate. Right. <laughs> so that's what I teach in the Diva Deep Dive, how to wake that up because it's there, but it's sleeping and it's armored. So you have to remove the armoring and wake that up. Same with the deep spot orgasm, which is right up near the uterus. Okay. This is one of the most incredible sensations you will ever experience. And guys, if your woman hasn't experienced it yet, my goodness, this is a good holiday gift. Diva Deep Dive, I show the women how to activate the deep spot orgasm. All right, up from the deep spot, of course, you have the chakra orgasms and mm -hmm. then into the full body orgasm. So that's the, the trail that I help the women follow in the Diva Deep Dive course. Okay, so you have the 
the G spot climax, which is the you said the African woman's climax. That's the clitoral orgasm. The African women say that that's the little girl's orgasm. Yeah, what would you say was the yeah? The, so the little girl's orgasm was clit clitoral orgasm. What'd you call the G spot orgasm? That's the female ejaculation. Oh, okay, okay. Um, so and I'm and I'm familiar with the G spot orgasm, female ejaculation, and actually studies recently have shown that the G spot is so the G spot is basically situated behind the clitoris, but studies have shown that they're actually connected. Very nice. Yeah, yeah well, so, there are not enough studies, and men right. are not the ones they don't know. They how could they have all this science? Mm -hmm. They don't understand female orgasm. Now they have every type of science. What are they? You know, that means they don't care about female orgasm. Mm -hmm. That's another reason I created the course because it's not just for pleasure. This right. is for well-being and overall health and youthfulness and creativity and spiritual connection. So this is a huge deal for women. Men often complain that we have a bad attitude. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? If half of our orgasms are not working <laughs> and we don't know what they are. Yeah. I remember one thing about the women in my family is they had incontinence. Incontinence mm. is connected to uh, uh, not opening for the female ejaculate to be expelled. So the female ejaculate builds up just like sperm and it's pushing on the, um, on the walls of the, um, the, the uh, where is the urethra all the time. Right. So, you know, all there's a lot of things caused by not a lot of illnesses caused by not being orgasmic uh, fully. Exactly. So I, I want you to talk about some of the health benefits here. And the reason why is, is because with the prevalence of pornography, and we know that about 51 <sighs> or 52 percent of Internet traffic are to adult type pornographic websites. And I, I do, I, I do acknowledge there, there are some um, uh, instructional videos and things like that. I do understand that, but uh, a lot of the um, uh, pornography can be harmful because it gives unrealistic expectations of, of sex and things like that. Um, explain the health benefits of uh, uh, orgasming regularly, uh, for women and also for men. Oh, I mean, you're talking about immune boosting. <laughs> you're talking about, as I said, the creativity, sexual, spiritual, sexual part. But the mm -hmm. biggest thing is that chi is flowing through all seven of these or, um, organ systems. And your reproductive organs is just as important as your kidney or your spleen or your liver. You have to run energy through all of those areas. A lot of people say, oh, I'm going to detox my liver. I'm going to detox my kidney. What about your reproductive organs? What about your root chakra? What about your pineal gland? What about for men, your prostate? Right. And for women, your prostate. Right. <laughs> those areas need to be massaged and exercised and in use. And um, homeostasis occurs during orgasm. You know what that is, right, Michael? Uh, well, uh, it's a balance. Uh, homeostasis is, is a, it's a, uh, a state of balance. Thank but you. It, and and it, 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 um, explain to people th th that state of balance, ho uh, homeostasis. Is yeah, that, homeostasis. Is that uh, it's like at being at peace yes. uh, during the orgasm or after the orgasm? Yes, it yeah. literally teaches the organs all over the body because all organs go into homeostasis during orgasm. So mm -hmm. the more that your organs can learn that, that feeling of balance that you achieve during orgasm, the more your organs can stay tuned in that balance. Right. Okay. And homeostasis is a teacher for the rest of the body that shows that moment of balance. And homeostasis is something that we need to reach. I need to reach that daily. <laughs> <laughs> so when I've said this before and I've, I've been studying like this type of information for um, a number of years now, dealing with sexual health, you know, things like that. Um, I've said before, and, and some people thought I was joking when I said this, but I really wasn't. Um, and maybe you can help me clean up, <laughs> clean it up the way I'm going to say it. But I, I think um, African-American women especially would be, happier and healthier if they were having 
powerful orgasms like at least three times a week. You know, especially especially um, with a partner as opposed to just by themselves, especially like with a partner. You know, can you talk about that for a minute? Oh, I absolutely agree. And when you say three or four orgasms, I am training women to be multi-orgasmic. Well, no, I ain't say three or four. I've said th- at least three times a week. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> one session, I have at least 10, you know, a few five or six or seven squirting ejaculations. Right. I want right. to get the deep spot. I want to get, so I'm having all of those in one sex session. But yes, right. if African-American women mm-hmm. reclaim the right, this is your birthright to pleasure and bliss and connection to goddess and God and spirituality through sensuality. This is our birthright. You Mm. understand? We know where it got stripped. We know how it got stripped. We know that women as young as 12 and 13 were forced into breeding and dealing with rape and molestation during those 400 years Mm. of slavery. But it is time. It is beyond time. 100 years past slavery, we have to come back to the same way of relating to each other, sensually, sexually, with consent. A lot of the men who took the class understood why women don't feel safe enough to have an orgasm. You understand? Mm -hmm. Because I'm a squirter. But with Mm -hmm. some men, I I don't squirt. Mm -hmm. Because they have not created a safe space at every step of the way. Right. And, and, and see, and, and this is why that's so important. That deals with a, a relationship. That's a deeper, deeper, a deeper level of intimacy. Yes. And that's a connection with the mind that has to exist for the woman to feel relaxed and comfortable enough to ejaculate. Because I've, I've had girlfriends in the past who, who could do that. But taking it back to um, adult films and pornography, the, 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 one of the reasons why it can be harmful when it comes to relationships is in many types of films, you don't see that intimacy. You don't see that relationship. Now, now there, there are some that are geared towards couples, which is kind of different. Okay, I'm not talking about that. But what happens is a lot of times people bring what they see in the movies into the relationship, into the bedroom, and it's not real. Right. And then that causes problems in the relationship. So you, when you talk about the, the deep level of intimacy and women being able to relax so that they can have a female ejaculation, how does that, how does that come about? How does that facilitate? Well, there's one thing that you said about porn, and it's unfortunate that people are bringing porn into the bedroom because Mm -hmm. porn only shows us 10% of what sex looks like. Mm -hmm. So in my Dima Deep Dive class, I made love with my partner and I put it on camera Mm -hmm. so that people and women and men who take the course can see how it might look not to just go from, oh, well, we are having oral sex, then I'm hitting from the back. Then right. I mean, there's a format in pornography that is not conducive to a format that would bring woman to orgasm. Right. <laughs> it's right. just that simple, you right. know? And so that's what we talk about in the Diva Deep Dive course, how to set up that format. That format is mm. nothing like porn. <laughs> okay, so some of the things you deal with, explore the depths of pleasure, enjoy your first G-spot climax, enjoy your first female ejaculation, enjoy your first deep spot climax, enjoy your first full body climax and, and first chakra climax, enjoy the ability to mentally moisten, enjoy clearing your sexual past. Talk about the, um, okay, so when we talk about female ejaculation, um, I have... I've come across men in the past who did not believe that women could do that. One, they thought it was urine. And I'm looking at them like, are you serious? It, 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 I've, I've, I've talked to men in the past who did not know. Now, this was probably 10 years ago. It's, yeah. I think it's more popular now, uh, but still some people don't understand it. And then I've also talked to women who um, could uh, achieve it, but thought that it was unnatural it was something wrong with it so then they felt inhibited i see okay so explain to people what exactly is female ejaculation what is taking place there sure absolutely just like the males have a prostate that Mm -hmm. make the fluid called you know the literal sperm and the fluid that houses sperm 
women have a prostate and we make fluids in our body. Those fluids go to, for instance, when we are going to have a baby and we can fill the, the uterus with fluid. Those fluids go to moisten the vaginal walls. Those fluids do a lot of things in the female system that females don't learn about in regular American sex education. So right. there's a lot of ducts that lead to the urethra, not just the bladder. So the bladder's up here and it's leading to the urethra, but there's a lot of other ducts that lead to the urethra. The urethra emits a lot of different fluids. So that is where the, the prostate is making this fluid. And when we don't ejaculate, I'm telling you, it's heavy on that bladder and we have incontinence. Okay, then you see all these women, they need to wear the adult panties and- Yeah. You know, that's and you see commercials for that. You see right. commercials for incontinence. Right, and, and where was that? A hundred years ago, where was that? Five hundred years ago, where was that in Africa? You know, we had some diapers and stuff for grown women. No, these women are not letting those fluids release. I had incontinence in my 20s before I knew I could do that. In my 20s. So, but as soon as I was able to start having the female ejaculation, the incontinence was gone. So in, in, in your 20s, the incontinence that you had, you um, could not control your bladder? I was always trying to run to the bathroom. Oh, it, okay, it right. Come on really fast. I, I just, oh my God, I gotta go, I gotta go, I gotta go. Right. I don't have that pressure on my bladder anymore. Hmm. I don't have to okay. run to the bathroom. <laughs> right, right. Why would I have those characteristics in my 20s and then in my 30s start to have sporting ejaculations, which are natural? They are not urine. And right. I have a special test that I help the women to open their mind to ejaculate. All the women who took Diva Deep Dive now ejaculate. That's hundreds of women because I gave them the easy test to know the difference between the urine and the ejaculate. So if a man wants to know, he needs to take the Diva Deep Dive. <laughs> right. Now, this course is for men and also partners can take it together. Can, they keep, can partners take it together as well? Uh... Partners can take it together. It's not for men. It's for women. Men take it so they can understand. Right. Well, with that, that, that's what I meant. I meant men can take it to understand women. That, yes. that, that's what I meant. Okay, that's that, that's what I meant by that. Um, okay, so besides um, not suffering from incontinence, mm -hmm. um, can you explain some of the health benefits when women can achieve female ejaculations as well, and oh, are and are achieving them? Oh, energy, <laughs> as I said, creativity. Um, as I told you about all of the um, organs coming into homeostasis, mm -hmm. learning that, yes, learning mm -hmm. that position of balance, your, your liver and your spleen and the rest of your organs, if they are out of balance, the way to balance them is through homeostasis orgasm. So that's the largest health benefit. You know, I really also focus on emotional benefits. Mm -hmm. And um, the emotional benefit of having orgasm for me was that I was not as angry, tense, and stressed out. The number one killer of humans is stress. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> so that was a big thing. And then my heart connection to my partner. Mm -hmm. It could open. I could heal from my past hurts and my past pains when I am flowing in this direction with my partner. You mm -hmm. understand? With this deep level of intimacy, deep level of trust. I feel sorry for women who even are married. I, I know women married 10 years, never had a real orgasm right. and, and fake it with their partner, never get to the level of intimacy where they can even discuss it. These things are, are serious too, the emotional benefit. And, so, and when you say a real orgasm, you're talking about uh, female ejaculation. Is that No, right? where oh. they've never had an orgasm. They never had oh. a literal Oh, orgasm. they never had a clitoral. Okay. Okay. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> They have it by their self. By their self. That's a sense of control. If mm -hmm. I can lay in the bed by myself with my toys, nobody's watching me. I'm not subject to opening Judgment. up to anyone. Right. Then yes, they could do it. Right. But they're having intercourse with a man. They just let him do his thing, and they're just like sort of there, and wow. they don't have nothing happening. Wow. Okay. Now tell people about the deep spot climax. That's that's different than the G spot climax, right? <laughs> tell I'm people so about excited. the G spot climax. As soon as you say it, you see my face, and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, that it, it, of... it may it may be it may have something to do with the way I say it, also. But <laughs> to tell me, but anyway, go ahead. The tone of your voice, <laughs> right? But, yes, I want to talk about the deep spot climax, but I also wanted to because I see you skipped over one thing on that list. 
Mm-hmm. Literally moistening. Well, that's at the bottom. Yeah, but I mentioned that at the beginning, but that's at the bottom. I'm gonna come to that. But go ahead, go ahead. You talk okay. about it. You can talk okay. about it. Go ahead. Okay. I want to talk about mentally moistening because we were talking about the emotional um benefits of women being orgasmic. Right. And one of them is that you uh, you know the stores they sell a whole rack of lubricants and this and that and mm-hmm. and I once talked to a woman from Jamaica and she said that she gets really wet. She could walk around and she's always getting wet and I said, "Well, American women have an issue with being wet." They, they, you know, we have a dryness issue in our culture because we've been so masculinized, right? And so masculinity is heat. <laughs> and so that heat is going to dry. It's not moisture. It's not cool like water, which is what we need to be moist. Right. So I have a whole exercise in the Diva Deep Dive for women to learn to release that mentality of heat before sex and literally moisten herself with her own mental process that I've given in the Deep and Deep Dive course. And I do it all the time because I used to be mad, have to reach for something and get something and, you know, I don't want to do that. My body's supposed to be moist and ready for a man. Right. So I had to redo that process mentally for the women. Okay. Okay. So that is uh, enjoy the ability to mentally moisten. Now you talk about the, the deep spot climax now that's different than the g-spot climax yes. right and i learned and you know i learned about I, so he, here's a funny story well i can't tell the whole story but i learned i learned about um one of the ways i learned about sex and adult novelties is from the adam and eve catalogs like when i was a you know when i was a teenager i came across them and i learned about g-spot orgasms and the G spot, things like this Graffen is Graffenberg uh, spot is named after the scientists who discovered it is like discovered in 1980, something like that. Graffenberg. That's what the G stands for. Uh, this is just a sad note, but anyway, uh, so <laughs> I learned about this stuff when I was young. Okay. Uh, now I wasn't sexually active, but I learned about it. Talk about what is the um, uh, deep spot cl- uh, climax and how is that different from the G spot climax? Well, yeah, the G-spot is just a different area of the vagina. The deep spot is, up, as I said, near the cervix. The cervix is what opens when a baby comes out into this world. Mm -hmm. And so that orgasm, in my view, is very rich and very um, different from what most women have ever experienced. In fact, Mm -hmm. it's like a blackout. So sometimes I like have a blackout in that type of scenario. But I love to reach that space. Um, We talked about um, emotional benefits and um, in terms of health benefits, the spiritual benefit of having that deep spot orgasm for me has been the ability to manifest. As you know, I connect manifestation with sex and magic. That's where that button is, (laughs) where you want to. And I've I've heard other experts do that as well. Talk about that also. It's ancient. It's something that's ancient ancient practice that again african people can come back to our own practices i was at a tantra event the other week and it was all full of persons of european origin i was the only person of african origin and she said well have you heard of sex magic i said baby for the indigenous people sex that's the only purpose of sex is magic and manifestation so they're just learning about your stuff right you know, it's like, are we going to embrace it and, you know, take it on again? Because it is our culture. So, so talk, talk about Tantra. And the, re- the reason why this is, this conversation is so important is because the way in Western culture, the way we're taught about sex and the purpose of sex, we know reproduction. We understand that. Okay. It's like 7.8 billion examples of that but but beyond reproduction it's like the um the way the western world teaches about sex and um the why you engage in it and things like this is different than the ancient world and ancient african culture talk about what is tantra because oftentimes we could we associate tantra with white people Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, Michael, I don't know why. I, I do know why. It, it has been left out or mistaught or not embraced. For, for me, there's three things. So the African-American community has had to re 
recoil itself from sexuality based on the sexual history of just watching, you know, people, the, the quote unquote enslaved persons breeding, mm -hmm. um, the rape that happened, the intolerable. Not, not having control over our bodies. Not so having any control. Yeah. So we swung all the way back to a very conservative stance. Mm -hmm. And so when we want to then look into Africa at our roots, at our history, and we find that we were the ones who invented Tantra, sacred sexuality, the art of sex magic, the art of sex healing, um, then it's hard to sort of reconcile because you, you haven't healed yet yeah. from that trauma to embrace you as a sexual being. But yes, that is what we were. That is who we are. We came up with these technologies around using sex as healing and sex as magic and manifestation. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. So we talked about the, the G spot climax, female ejaculation, clitoral orgasm, uh, deep spot climax. Now what is the full body climax? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you thought I had to get my fan up now. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Michael, the deep spot, I'm sorry, not the deep spot, but the full body, full body orgasm is when you have ignited all of the other areas and you have moved. I show the ladies how to do the golden flute, how to ignite all of the areas of orgasm at the same time so that you can stay in that full body sensation 30 minutes at a time, 45 minutes at a time. And men can do this too. I talked about the 30 minute orgasm 12 years ago on the Monique show. Um, right. when on BET. I mean, yeah. I've been doing it all of these years and it shows. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. It just feels like being uh, at the height of aliveness for 30 minutes at a time and just laying there, basking in it, and not just lying there. A lot of times people have epiphanies, you know, mm -hmm. when you're in that full body space. Men, I've heard, heard men speak from their spirit rather than their talk for their family or goals or, you know, it's the manifestation part. Yes. Right. I'm just a quick time to say there. And just uh, happy for me and uh, also her husband, Carl uh, Stevens. They have uh, been on the Dr. Phil show in the past, the Dr. Phil uh, talk show, uh, the Michael Baisden uh, radio show uh, as well, a number of times, Michael Baisden radio show. And the, uh, when Monique had her uh, talk show, they were on the Monique show as well. Okay. And we've had them a number of times on the African History Network show, even when I was on Blog Talk Radio, going back to Blog Talk Radio days, uh, we've had them on. Okay, so you okay, so you talk about the full body climax. Now you just talked about the spiritual connection. Okay, and we talked about this a little earlier. Um explain because usually in Western society, when we talk about sex, it's either the, the spiritual aspect is left out of it, or we're told that um, somehow it's against God or it's, it, it's um, the way we have been taught about sex has often been um, something negative in, in Western culture. Okay. Talk about the spiritual connection when it comes to sex and, and, and talk about the spiritual connection for women as well as men. What, 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 what's taking place? Yeah, sure. So what we talk about when we talk about a spiritual connection during sex is when we think of yin and yang, like the sun mm -hmm. and moon, these are two very powerful forces. Without the sun, there's no earth, there's no people. Without the moon, there's no, you know, the tides or the water. We do. I think the whole earth would be underwater without the moon pulling the tides in and out, right? So when we talk about these two forces, these are the two forces inside of us that are running our bodies. These are yin and yang is the basis of the nervous system and the, um, the parasympathetic nervous system. The parasympathetic nervous system is internal. So that's yin. The sympathetic nervous system is external. So that's yang, that's your skin, you know? That, so these forces are inside of us. They are what we are. And when we have sex, we are 
summoning these forces. We're energizing these forces. And this may sound like woo, but there was another woman at that conference and she said, well, some of this sounds like woo. Woo is not a, uh, it, woo is a derogatory term. I don't care that the West does not, or the Western doctors don't believe in energy, don't believe in spirit. That's not my problem. They don't know how to cure a common cold. They don't know how to cure their, whatever they're dealing with right now, their COVID, which I have an absolute cure for, and I am not at risk. They don't know how to uh, uh, nurture a family, nurture people to be sane. They have people walking around into school, shooting it up, and they look at their culture. Why are we listening to that? What right. this is, when I talk about the spiritual connection with sex, is it makes humans sane again, humane again. Our sensuality, the way we move, the ability to reach pleasure, the ability to care for each other, nurture each other through sensuality and touch. This is what brings sanity to humans. You can look at that, you know, in cultures that know how to connect and cultures that don't know how to connect. Right, right. <laughs> so, that's what I mean when I say the spiritual connection to with sensuality and orgasm, especially. I, I want you to give the website again, because there's a sneak preview. We posted it here on the thread of the broadcast, but there's a sneak preview that people yep. can check out. Give, give people the website again. It is bit.ly um, backslash diva deep. Oh, that's a dive. forward slash, actually. It's forward slash. Forward slash right. diva deep dive. And if they want to just go to my website, Progressive Love Academy, mm -hmm. they can go there and look at the courses. It's under the courses. But we have 71 courses at Progressive. Right. So this website here, uh, the link bit.ly forward slash diva deep dive. Yes. This takes you directly to the course that Kenya's talking about. And what's the promotion that you're offering uh, right now on the course? Right now, I'm offering 50% off of that course. I'm only offering that through Cyber Monday because okay. it's all me doing demonstrations naked with my partners and really wanting to show. I mean, I can't, you know, keep this course on sale. This is private. Right. <laughs> this is a private stop. This is the top show. But yes, I do want people to have it and have it be obtainable. Okay, the course is usually $997. It is half off at $4997. And you can pick that up with the code DDD2020. And all of that should be in your links there. Right, we posted the link. And then um, this is also something that's good for um, couples can experience this together, experience the course together. Uh, the the husband or the boyfriend can buy this for the wife or the girlfriend, the girlfriend, it, or she may buy it for, for him, for them to experience it together as well. So yes. one of the things that, you know, in the past when you and Carl have done um, uh, uh, Tantra seminars and live Tantra seminars, we've talked about that here on this show going back some years. And, and um, one of the things you, you talk about how is this is not pornography. Okay. Just talk, if you, if you want to, just talk about that for a minute to, to un, for people to understand the benefit. Yeah, pornography is not, pornography is a, another westernized concept of sex. It removes spirit, like <laughs> everything in the West removes spirit, and it removes humanity, and it makes it objectified. It objectifies the female. Mm -hmm. And really, it's the male who wants to be objectified. <laughs> but Western culture flipped that over. It objectifies the female, makes us an optic. A woman is the subject of sex, baby. You said you said you said really it's the man that wants to be objectified. Absolutely, every man. Explain that. Explain that. Any man. Okay, let's just say we out at the bar, Michael, and okay. a woman come up to you and they tapping you on the shoulder and they say they're interested in you and they they you know they're pinching your butt and they say this is that. Now men want men lo would love this. The the masculine wants to be objectified. He wants to show off his muscle. He wants to show himself off it put his body out there and be seen like the sun. The women are subject of sex. We want, we're the choosers. Mm -hmm. We're the internal, you know, you're enacting upon us. So I don't understand why the West changed that around. It's, it's backwards. Well, it, I, oh, go ahead. I, I think a lot of it had to do, uh, from, from my understanding research, like on European culture, especially coming out of the Christian church, there was a fear of the femininity of women and the sexuality of women. And, and if you go back and study like the Salem witch trials, 
what they consider being a witch, one of the things that was considered being a witch was a woman having an orgasm. That's right. Was considered a witch. You could be killed for that. That's right. And were. Yeah. So you, so you dealing with some like really deep sick stuff here when you start dealing with European culture. Okay. And then we, when then we have been largely stripped of African culture and then European culture enforced upon us largely by trauma. Right. Yeah. So, <laughs> and so it's, it becomes hilarious when persons of African descent say, Oh, I don't know about that time. What's that? Which like, <laughs> This is your, this is, this was the lifeblood of people who could transcend spiritually and come up with so many magnificent creations. This was how they were doing it. <laughs> okay. Now, also you, you talk about enjoy your first uh, chakra climax. Explain to people what are the chakras, the seven energy centers of the body? What are the chakras? Yes. So the seven energetic centers of the body can now be found in a lot of Chinese writings. But of course, this is an original African technology, the chakra system, um, the seven chakra system. There's a few. There's a nine. There's a 14. But the seven chakra system simply talks about having an energy center at the throat, the third eye, the crown, the heart, the sacral, um, the solar plexus, these uh, and the root. So these seven chakras, they say, um, um, harmonize the organs in those areas and also um, when they are energized and powered up give you the energy to do what you need to do on planet earth so it's very important to feed the chakras to understand them to meditate with them but when you talk about having sex with the chakras I believe that there's a yani or a lingam in each of the chakras where you can connect to your partner just like you connect you know, with the sexual organs, you can connect heart to heart. You can connect brow to brow. You mm -hmm. can connect, you know, throat to throat. So that is something I teach in the Diva Deep Dive as well. Okay. All right. So that's uh, dealing with the uh, chakra climax. Yes. Um, okay. So we talked about female ejaculation, G-spot uh, climax. Uh, we talked about the spir spiritual connection. You mentioned woo a few minutes ago. Explain the people. Now the woo I know about is the movie with Jada Pinkett Smith. What woo are you talking about? When I, when, when I say woo, a lot of persons of European origin in the new age community, they call it woo when something seems a little bit too indigenous, a little bit too ritualistic, ceremony, deities. Okay. <laughs> that are all common in Africa. They'll say, oh, that's a little woo. Okay. We want to get back to science. We want to get back to science. <laughs> now, now, but see, in the, see, when they talk about science, though, science comes from African people, but in, but in, a traditional African culture, and one of my teachers, Professor Kaba Hiawatha Kamene, yeah. teaches on this, and he has a lecture on this. Um, spirituality and science were not opposites; they were the they were they they were not opposing each other. They were like the opposite sides of the same coin. He talks about how spirituality is unseen science, and science is seen spirituality. They were not at odds with each other. Right. But Western culture is different. Western culture is different in that science and spirituality are polar opposites and they don't seem to fit together, which is not going to allow any of their systems to work. Because just as I said, the systems have to be based on that external and internal. The spirituality is the internal, the yin. The, 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 the external is the yang, you know, the sun, the, what they call science, but that has to be conjoined. Those are two forces that go together. So I don't know how any of their systems can work. I mean, look around. Do they work? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> um, the the promo code people can use is uh, DDD2020. DDD2020. Get 50% off. That's uh, Black Friday through Cyber Monday. And um, the, the website, once again, BIT dot ly forward slash diva deep dive bit dot ly forward slash diva deep dive uh there's some um free previews that you can preview there as well get let people know can you give people an overview or tell them a few things they'll see when they look at the free previews absolutely when you look at the previews what you'll see is pieces of the lectures so as i said there are six intellectual lectures where we mm -hmm. really talk about this stuff and talk about how to move past your pain and how to heal that flow of chi and 
that's just the intellectual portion. Right. Six course videos and homework assignments. Yes. Okay. And you will get six non-intellectual videos where I am demonstrating to you how to do each of those areas. So we demonstrate clitoral, we de demonstrate G-spot, sporting ejaculation, we demonstrate deep spot, and we demonstrate the chakra orgasms and full body. Okay. And we take you, then you take, we take you through a meditation where you close your eyes and you feel into this and then you uh, go along with the demonstration and start to work on your body. And open right. Right. Now, do you find you, you do you find uh, uh, people that go through this? This is a homework assignment that they actually want to do. They don't say my dog ate it or I forgot to do it or something like that. It's like a it's like an actual homework assignment. You don't have to tell them twice to do. <laughs> you don't have to tell nobody to do these homework assignments. They do them again and again. I had one young lady who took the course and she just said, this is going to be my weekly practice. It's not no longer homework. This is something that I have to do for my own mental health and spiritual health. Right. So you keep the course forever. Once you buy it, it's yours. You can have a viewing of it with your girlfriends. You can do it by yourself. You can do it with your partner. I gave it to my daughter. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not letting another generation go on like this, baby. Right. Now, I watch. Now, now, one of the things that you talk about in here that's, that's in the course is three powerful meditations to clear your sexual history. Three powerful meditations to clear your sexual history. Talk about that, clearing your sexual history. Sure. Yeah, I created a meditation technique called lacing. And so that's what I do and give in this course. You will get a lacing meditation to connect with whatever trauma you went through, incorporate that trauma into this meditation the way that I tell you to, and then your brain will start to process that trauma away. That's what we want in order to open orgasm. It's going to be locked. It's going to be closed mm -hmm. if you have traumas that surround your reproductive organs. Wow. Okay. Yeah, so that's what we have there in that course. And the women who use it, they all tell their stories in the course. So you'll see their stories at the bottom. It's 100 women took the course when I did it live. Wow. Wow. Well, Aries here on the, uh, we, so we have some comments here. People watching. We've got Michelle and uh, Todd and Aries. And uh, uh, Aries said, I've taken her courses. Uh, they are amazing. She said, her courses are amazing. I've taken a few. Um, so, and, 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 you know, I, in the African American community, I think is something that we really have to focus on is the trauma, the sexual trauma that many, many of us are suffering from women and men, women and men. And we know also that hurt people hurt people. When we, when we uh, study um, sexual trauma, molestation and things like this, we, we know that hurt people hurt people. And, um, not to pick on him, but this is one of the more well-known examples recently. When we look at R. Kelly, it's alleged that he was a victim of molestation, you know, when he was a child by his older sister. Uh, and so then we see uh, one of the things that I found really troubling and interesting, I talked about this on my show, when they did um, uh, the documentary um, Surviving R. Kelly, uh, the the rapper Chance the Rapper, he was interviewed in there, and Chance the Rapper said, and there was an article about this. He said, maybe I did not believe the accusers because they were black women. Oh my goodness. He said, maybe I did not believe the accuser. He's actually in the video saying this, and he uh, it's it's also there's an article written about this. He said, maybe I did not believe them because they were black women. And when they went to the when they talked about the uh, original trial for the alleged pornography and things like this. They interviewed some of the jurors and the jurors talked about why they did not believe the accusers. Okay. And these black women, why did not believe the accusers? They didn't think they were trustworthy. They didn't like the way they looked and the different things like this. But a lot of this ties into stereotypes of African-American women. And this all ties into sexual trauma and oftentimes many of us not being in control of our bodies. And then that negatively impacts our relationships, our health, ability to have orgasms. Uh, and then when our children grow up in those types of environments, it can help repeat that cycle. Okay. Right. So, that, so that's why, you know, this type, that's why this type of information is so important is it's beyond sex it's beyond pleasure. Uh, Cause I know a lot of women who suffer from sexual trauma. And the other thing is, is like when we look at, um, in the past, I've known 
a lot of women who were exotic entertainers or what people may call strippers. And many of them have suffered from sexual trauma before they got into the business. And for some of them, that's one of the things that led them possibly into the business as well. Possibly, yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. I love that you say all of that because this is something that, you know, you say it's beyond sect and we have to say that because of mm -hmm. the conservative nature and the way we have disconnected sex from spirituality. We have to say it's beyond sex into political understandings into social spiritual understandings and yes it has affected our family and these are cellular memories that's another thing that the west is just now waking up to cellular memories right. yeah but, but, but we knew this we know this and so when we're carrying genetics from generations of this type of abuse we have utilized tantric healing and tantric sex when I say sex, I don't mean intercourse. Sex does, is not intercourse. Sex means connection. So <laughs> explain, explain that. Sex does not mean intercourse. Sex means connection. Right. My, in my view, mm -hmm. sex does not mean intercourse. Mm -hmm. Sex means connection. So if I'm connecting with anyone on a deep level and I can feel that I am being sexual with them, <laughs> that is sex for me. So that came after a lot of healing and moving through this work, doing the lacing, doing the Tantra, realizing that I can have an orgasm land on the earth. Mm -hmm. I can have an orgasm connecting to flowers or trees or connecting to you. If we're in the same room, Michael, we're having a conversation that gets a certain way. You see my body starts to move. We're right. in a sensual arrangement. Right. And that is what people, you know, once you open to this, then now you realize that it's not even about the intercourse to where <laughs> sex is a part of your godliness. So, yeah. Mm. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So once again, people uh, visit uh, bit.ly forward slash diva, diva deep dive, bit.ly forward slash diva deep dive, or you can, what's the other website? Progressive love Academy dot com. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's the other website as well. Use promo code uh, DDD2020, get 50% off. That's Black Friday through Cyber Monday. And uh, let people know uh, you're also, you also went through training through the Arsaw Offset Society as yes. well as a comedic priestess. Oh my talk, talk, talk about that for a minute. So much shout out to the Alcera Asset Society of Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. um, that's where I was trained for 11 years as a priestess. But without those understandings, I don't think I would have understood Tantra. The work and the journey that they put me through in learning the African deities, the goddesses, you know, that is stripped from the Bible. We don't have a female god in Western culture. But learning that there was a female god <laughs> and many female goddesses mm -hmm. and embodying the traits of each of those even one Oshun who is a goddess of love and she's a goddess of pleasure and she wants women to be filled with pleasure and she has a fan like this <laughs> in her imagery but you know embodying those goddesses that the Osiriset community taught me opened me up to be able to be a tantra practitioner and a sex healer so I mean I just love that network of people and I give them shouts for being early starters. They started in the 70s re-educating. Can you imagine that? A hundred years after slavery, now we get to relearn who we were before that time. What a blessing. So I had wow. that experience, yes. Okay, excellent, excellent. Um, and then you, you're also a book author uh, yes. as well. Are there a couple books that you wanna plug before we get out of here? Sure. I wrote The Art of Up-Level Communication, which is the Tantra of Communication, how to talk to your partner about anything without causing an argument, how to vent, how to let it out. You know, everything like this is available on my Instagram at Progressive Love Academy. You can also just go to ProgressiveLoveAcademy.com. I am Progressive Love Academy here on Facebook. Um, we welcome and invite everyone, Michael. Thank you so much for having this conversation. It's really bold and courageous. All right. No but problem. Thing, people Look are at, at home, Michael. People are at home in this yeah. COVID thing. And what are they doing? They're just sitting there with their partner. This is a perfect time to right. connect and do some magic and work on yourself. Well, you know, I, I, I've heard that they're, they're going to, um, they're, 
going to be a lot of divorces coming from the COVID, uh, <laughs> coming from the COVID pandemic because people are um, at home more with their partners and realize they don't like them or what have you. And then, <laughs> but <laughs> and then I think there's some already divorces that have come. But also, this is a good time for you to spend learning more about your partner, learning more about relationships, intimacy, removing blockage, things like that. Okay. So this is, I think this is a good time for that also. All right, Kenya. Well, look, thanks for uh, taking time out of your busy schedule to come back on, on to the African history network show and uh, people visit their website and uh, uh, check out the course. Uh, there, there's some uh, free previews there and uh, she can definitely help you uh, improve your intimacy, improve your relationships, remove uh, sexual um, uh, blockage as well, but also help you increase uh, better orgasms, which is, which is healthy also, okay? All right, Kenya, take care, sister. Peace. Talk to you again soon. Bye-bye. All, right, all right, bye. All right, everybody, take care. Hey, this is Michael M. Hotep, the African History Network show. Um, you can uh, listen to the African History Network show uh, Monday through Friday, 11 p.m. to 12 midnight Eastern Standard Time, 11 p.m. to 12 midnight Eastern Standard Time. Uh, we're on Facebook, uh, the African History Network, on my YouTube channel, Michael M. Hotep, I-M-H-O-T-E-P. And we also broadcast, I do radio here in Detroit, we broadcast on 9, 10 a.m. the Superstation, WFDF, 9, 10 a.m. the Superstation, WFDF, here in Detroit. Uh, and then we're also on Sundays, 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time as well. So as of October 12th, we are on six days a week as opposed to one day a week. For four years, it was uh, Sundays, 9 p.m. to 11 p.m., the African History Network show. Been in that time slot for four years, starting October 12th, 2020. We're on six days a week, okay? If you want to advertise with the African History Network, email us at customer service at africanhistorynetwork.com customer service at africanhistorynetwork.com. If you want to advertise with the African History Network, we have a few spots left for our uh, show Monday through Friday. We're sold out for Sundays, uh, but we have a few spots left for our show Monday through Friday. And then um, also, if you want to donate to the African History Network, we have people that want to support us, but don't own a business. Uh, if you want to donate to the African History Network, dollar sign the AHN show through Cash App, dollar sign the AHN show through Cash App, then also uh, through PayPal, paypal.me forward slash the AHN show, paypal.me forward slash the AHN show, or at our website, africanhistorynetwork.com. And um, uh, our shows are also in audio podcast format. So you can listen wherever you go. Um, you can, we're on iHeartRadio, iTunes, CastBox, Stitcher, TuneIn, FM Player. Just search for the African History Network show the African History Network show. And uh, we're also on Blog Talk Radio, blogtalkradio.com forward slash the African History Network show, blogtalkradio.com forward slash the African History Network show. And we have a podcast there going back 10 years, okay? All right, so hope everybody's doing well. Stay safe um, during uh, this season and we, we see an increase in uh, coronavirus cases. We're at 13 million cases uh, nationwide. You know, I've been talking about that on my show. Uh, so uh, everybody uh, stay safe. And, uh, and, and like I said before, and I'll say it again, so people may want to get mad at me, but I think that from my research and my understanding of, um, well, society and everything, just things in general, I think if African-American women we're having um, powerful orgasms at least three times a week, especially with um, a partner who they cared about, not just on their own, but, you know, a partner who they cared about. I think um, many of them would be much happier and uh, it would help um, address a lot of the trauma that's been inflicted upon them. I'm against the trauma being inflicted upon them. I'm not blaming them. I don't want people to misunderstand me. I'm against the trauma being inflicted, but um, the intimacy is healing also. The intimacy is healing uh, as well, okay? Uh, and, you know, a lot of times we hear the stereotype of the angry black woman, and we don't hear that stereotype with other women. And if we look at the... Um, presidential campaign that just took place, I saw a lot of angry white women, 
but that stereotype of the angry, but that stereotype of being angry is not associated with white women, it's associated with African American women. Well, there's been sexual trauma inflicted upon African American women, women that in general has not been inflicted upon other races of women as, you know, um, to the level it has been inflicted upon African American women. Okay. So when we, if, if we talk about this whole stereotype of the angry black woman, things like that, we have to peel back the layers of trauma. Okay. To understand, well, how did he get to this point and what do we do now? All right. Look, we have to get out of here. Remember at the African History Network, we focus on educating, empowering, and inspiring people of African descent throughout the diaspora and around the world. Because right now it's correct wrong behavior is not over till we win. We're kind of forever. We'll talk to you next time. And then you, you know, and I said it before, men experience trauma as well, but it's we see it more prevalent in general when it comes to African American women and girls. African American men and boys experience trauma. That is true but it's more prevalent from what I've seen in African-American women and girls. All right. We'll talk to y'all uh, next time. Peace. Thanks for tuning in.